Got you got your study guide. We're going to be looking at. Thank you, hon. Thank you, Kate. We're going to be starting with point five. An angel promises the birth of Jesus to Mary, and then point six. six Mary visits Elizabeth. We talked last Sunday about point seven. John the Baptist is born. And then we're going to be looking at point eight also. An angel appears to Joseph. Genesis 3, 15. Most of y'all could quote this verse because I use it so much because this is when we first see the promised Messiah, our Lord and our Savior. Genesis 3 and 15. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He's speaking to the serpent and the woman. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head and thou shall bruise his heel. Flip over with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7, and verse 14. This is a verse that you know very well. Isaiah 7 and 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call and shall call his name Emmanuel. Matthew 1 and 23. You want to keep your Bibles open this morning because we're going to be looking at a lot of scripture this morning. Matthew 1 and 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And that's what I want to speak about for just a few moments this morning. Emmanuel, God with us. Father, I ask Lord that you just touch this morning your word. Glory to God. I thank you for the sweet presence of the Holy Ghost that's been in this house from the very start this morning. I thank you for that anointing. Glory be to God, because without that anointing, without that spirit, we can't do anything. I pray, God, that you'd touch me this morning, that I might speak forth just the things that are needed, nothing more and nothing less. Lord, I believe that you've touched bodies here this morning. Lord, I believe that you have answered prayers already in this service this morning. Already you have poured your blessings upon us, and we thank you for that. And I pray just now, God, that your word, oh, hallelujah, that your word will speak to our hearts those things that are needed. And I pray, Lord, if there's one that has not believed in your son Jesus for the forgiveness of their sins, this day will be the day in Jesus' name. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. Let's go over to the book of Luke first. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. Luke 1 and 26. Sin had entered in. The first Adam, Romans tells us about this, because of the first Adam and his sin, it entered the bloodline of man. And everyone born was born into sin. We had no way to get to God. Our fellowship was broken with God, and there was no way that we could get there. But all the way back in Genesis 3 and 15, God said, I'm going to make a way. I'm going to make a way that you ain't going to have to go through the law. I'm going to write the laws in your heart, and your heart is going to be changed. The seed of woman, speaking of the virgin birth, the seed of woman, Christ Jesus will come. And, he, and you can be born again, oh hallelujah, by the second Adam, Jesus Christ, in whom was no sin and whom was no wrong. So this is the beginning. They began to proclaim Genesis 3 and 15. God already showed us and gave us that promise all the way through the Old Testament. And we talked about this when we talked about the ancestry of Jesus Christ. Satan tried to stop the bloodline. 
Time and time again he tried to stop where Messiah would come because he knew that Messiah would take his head, oh hallelujah, put it under his heel and crush his head. He knew that in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior we would have victory over death, hell, and the grave. He knew that Jesus Christ would come upon the cross when he paid for my sins and your sins and he atoned with that precious sinless blood that we would have a way not through the veil of the temple not by some priest but that we would have a way through Christ Jesus right into the very throne room of God where we could have fellowship with God our Lord and there make our petitions known unto Him. He knew that Christ Jesus would bring victory to mankind and He did not want that. Let's look here this morning. We see the hand of God and how the hand of God has worked. We talked about last Sunday about uh, John the Baptist and, and Zechariah the daddy and Elizabeth and how God was working and bringing the past so that men would see this was very Christ. Christ did not come wrapped in mystery. He did not come hidden from man. He was not born up in some great palace where only the only the hierarchy would know. He was brought down to common man to me and to you and yet people would not believe. Today, His Spirit goes out. Today His Spirit goes out into all the world. It, it flows from the highest mountain and it goes to the lowest valleys. And yet men turn aside and do not believe. Why is that? Is it because uh, that, that they can't see or they can't... No, they see, but they don't want Christ. They don't want it God's way. They want it their way. And so they refuse the things of God. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Look with me. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now here you see a lot of things taking place. Because he, in the word shows us from Nazareth. He shows us these, these, all these prophecies had been fulfilled in Christ. There's no way all the prophecies in the Word of God about Messiah could be fulfilled in one man. But God brings it all to pass. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now you say, and, and you just have to hold your place because I'm going to stop time or two, several times. We might get through this today and we might end up on it again next Sunday. That'll be all right. A lot of people say virgin, that means a young woman. No, it means what it says. It means what it says. She was a virgin. She had never known a man. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women. Mary was a chosen vessel of God. We looked at her lineage, how that came from the line from where Messiah was to come. Not only was she chosen for those reasons, but she was chosen because of the life that she lived. We'll see that in a little while if we get time, if we get to the place this morning to look into Matthew when the angel appears unto Joseph. Because he knew Mary was a child of Almighty God. He knew the life she lived. And we'll talk about those things in a little bit. And when she saw him, speaking of when she saw the angels, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what matter of salutation this should be. Think about that for a moment. Here's Mary and all at once an angel appears and he says, you're highly favored. There's a task. You're called out for a purpose and for a reason. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. I could preach the rest of the morning right there. Do you realize because of the grace of God, you have found favor with God? 
We're going to talk a little more about Mary here in a moment, but I want to talk about us. Because of the grace of God and because you have received that grace and you have accepted, you have accepted the forgiveness of your sins, you have believed in the cleansing power of the blood of Jesus Christ and His cross. And you by faith have received those things. You are highly favored of God. I don't tell you that to puff you up because it's not you. It's Christ in you. The devil would have you to think you're nobody and you're nothing and God doesn't care about you. God doesn't know about you. God's not concerned about you. God doesn't know what you're going through with. But God does know what you're going through with and He knows right where you're at and you have the favor of God. We forget that. I forget that. We get so frustrated about things that do not matter. Maybe I'm only stepping on my toes this morning. Things that don't give any weight about anything. We get so aggravated because somebody cuts us off. Hit home then, didn't I? Why that slow poke pull out there if he's not going to go anywhere? Might be because you're favorite of God. Might be because there's just an accident right around that hill. You don't know how many times that's missed. You don't know how many times God's favor is with you. Amen. Brother Doug, you done gone off, off the deep. No, I have not. I know God. And I know His children have favor with Him. Let me go on. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and shalt bring forth a son and shalt call His name Jesus. Oh, what a name. You, you, You can have be weighted down with all the troubles of the world. Feel like, Brother Mark, there's nowhere to turn and no way to go. And all you got to simply do is say the name of Jesus. My, 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 my. Had that name, devils tremble. Hallelujah. Had that name, troubles and situations had to flee. He said, you're going to call his name Jesus. Verse 32, and he shall be great. And shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Can you say amen? Amen. Listen to verse 34. I want you to catch these words. They're very important. Then said Mary unto the angel... How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Mary knew. Joseph had faith, hear me, I'm getting plain, that Mary was pure, and you're going to find that out here in a little while, and he believes. Mary knew. Are you catching me? Mary knew this can not be. How will this be accomplished? I am pure. There is no way this can happen. Mary knew. I was going to sing the song this morning. I should have brought it, but anyhow. Mary, did you know? She did know. She did know. When nobody else knew, Mary knew. When she felt the baby in her womb, she knew. This is very Christ. This is very God. 
Mary asked, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, Glory be to God. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. If we had time, we'd flip back again to Genesis and we'd see where the Spirit of God moved over the waters and the Spirit of God moved over the earth as God said, let there be. Oh, I see the Holy Ghost of God touching this precious lady and there put in her was the very Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Brother Doug, you believe this? You better know I believe it. Oh, hallelujah. How do you believe it, Brother Doug? Because he lives in my heart and my life. Because I have been a recipient of his forgiveness. I have been a recipient, Brother Brandon, of his love and of his grace and of his life. I know this morning he is the very Son of God, born of a virgin without sin. The angel answered, said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Skip down with me to verse 39. Oh, let me, hold on, I'm sorry. I got just a few more verses here. Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. She have also conceived the Son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. We could preach two or three sermons right here on verse 37. Listen. For with God nothing for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, And the angel departed from her. The angel spoke to Mary that day and he said, In essence, with man, this is impossible. You know that. But with God, nothing is impossible. Some person who thought they were wise asked the question one day. You say, God can do anything and nothing's impossible with him. Can God make a rock so big that he can't move it? Sure he can. And then he can turn around and move it. Doesn't make sense, Brother Doug. It ain't meant to make sense. He's God. I know I'm crazy. You don't have to tell me after church. I I understand that. My God can do anything. The songwriter wrote the song, My God can do anything. Anything, yes, anything my God can do anything. I believe with all my heart there's nothing my God cannot do. And He will do and will perform it for His people. I don't care what kind of problem you got. I don't care what kind of situation you're in. I don't care what circumstance you're facing. My God has a way out. And His love will be there for you. Now verse 39. Now Mary knew what she was going to face. That day in that age, if you were caught in fornication... She knew man wasn't going to believe her. But she knew. And she could be actually taken out and stoned. We're going to look here just a moment at Joseph. He had not been a just man and willing to save her a lot of ridicule. She knew what was allowed to happen. But she trusted God. Sister Darlene brought that out this morning. Do we really trust God? Do we really depend upon Him? She did. She believed this would come to pass and that God would be with her in it. So Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with the haste into the city of Judah 
and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. We talked about Elizabeth last Sunday. What a Holy Ghost filled woman she was. This year shows it. Here is Mary. Who does she run to? Does she run to family? Does she run to the, she runs to somebody that she knows has the Holy Ghost of God in their life? Has the anointing of God in their life, not the wisdom of this world? She runs to somebody that she knows is in touch with God. And she goes to him. Now listen to what happens. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass. Oh, glory be to God. This excites me every time that I read it. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe, speaking of John the Baptist, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Can you imagine that? As soon as Mary proclaims this, John the Baptist, glory be to God, in the womb begins to move because he hears that the Messiah has been brought forth. And she spake out with a loud voice, speaking of Elizabeth, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. What had the angel already told Mary? The same things that the Holy Ghost is speaking through Elizabeth. I want to tell you, if you're anointed of the Holy Ghost, Sister Darlene mentioned this this morning, and you're called up on the council, do you not, do not, do not open your mouth out of your own wisdom. If you don't feel the Holy Ghost of God coming on you, you just shut your mouth. I know that's plain and simple. But if you feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God upon you, you open that mouth and you let the Word of God come forth. And Elizabeth knew what, what God had done. And she says some of the very same things that the angel had already said to Mary. Listen. She said, and she spake out with a loud voice and said, verse 42, Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And hence it is to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation. Do, do you see what's happening? Elizabeth didn't hear all those things the angel had told Mary. She didn't hear, but the Holy Ghost told it to her. The Holy Ghost is real, church. The Holy Ghost still works and moves in this last day. And if we expect to see our lost loved ones saved, we expect to see our children come back in. It is only by and through the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God that it's going to happen. Oh, hallelujah. And she spake out with a loud voice, Blessed are thou among women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, and whence... Is this to me that the mother of my Lord, speaking of Christ, should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. If John was just a blob, I got to throw this in. He wouldn't know what leaping for joy was, would he have? Verse 46, and Mary said, Can you imagine the joy that filled her heart as the Holy Ghost confirmed to her what the angel had already spoke? And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit have rejoiced in God my Savior. For he have regarded the lowest state of his handmaid, and behold, from hence all generations shall call me blessed. I'm going to stop right here before I go on. Do you realize and hear who she's exalting? She's exalting Christ. She knows she is just an instrument. I'm not going to get into great detail. But Mary, you can't pray unto her and get through to God. Amen. Oh, I know that's not going to be like but some, but it's just the plain facts of life. We look at her as, yes, she was so blessed for this. But she is not... Oh, this is going to throw some for a loop. She is not mother of God. Well, it got quiet in the end, didn't it? 
She was the instrument wherewith Christ came forth. Let me go on. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hunger with good things. And the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath holden his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. She is reminded that God's promises are true. They are yea, they are everlasting, and they are coming to pass through Messiah. Verse 56, And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. Now flip back with me quickly. And I'm going to try to close here in just a moment. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. One of the questions that comes to my mind, and if it had been an important question, the Spirit would have answered it in Scriptures, is when did Mary tell Joseph? I don't know. I don't see it. How? Because it says she went straight to Elizabeth. It's gone three months. Somehow, Joseph knew what had taken place. Let's read. That's just something for you to ponder. Don't think I've got an answer. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know what come to pass during this time. But I do know this, verse, seven, verse 18. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, listen, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. She was a virgin. This was pure, spotless, holy blood that flowed in the veins of Christ Jesus. Mary was espoused. What does that mean, Brother Doug? Well, their ways were different than our ways are today. And their espousal was just as binding as a marriage was. If you have took time to look at the tape that the church provided, you'll see about the Galilean wedding and how that all took place and how that all come about. But there was a time of espousal before the wedding couple came together as husband and as wife. So now he's espoused to her. Now listen, verse 19. She's found with child of the Holy Ghost. This is how I know that Joseph was a just man and that he helped Mary in high esteem. He knew the life that she lived. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, <clears throat> was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Now, he thought to himself, I, I just can't see how this can be. How is this coming to pass? And and he loved Mary. And he said, I'm not going to make a public example of her. I'm just going to put her away privately. But listen. But while he thought on these things, I could preach a sermon right here about when he thought on these things. If you're not very careful, the devil will get you aside and get you thinking. You know what he began to do? He began to put little seeds of doubts. Little seeds of fear. Amen? You began to think, well, here's the way I can get out of this situation. 
And in reality, if it's your way, what it's going to do is going to put you in a worse fix than what you are now. Instead of saying, God, it's in your hands. And now that's not always easy to do. I'm a person that I think too much. I do. I, I try to think of solutions and ways. And then the Spirit speaks to me. The other morning, there was a situation on the job. He cares about things on the job. And I thought, well, I'm just going to grab this bull by the horns. That tires up the china shop if you ain't careful. The Holy Spirit got a hold of me and I said, Lord, you just show me. I'm not going to do anything until you open that door. And I felt the direction that I needed to go. And I said, Lord, I believe this is the direction. But I'm going to let you open the door. And sure enough, I stepped out of my office. And when I did, he was able to open the door. And everything just began to work out. Watch how you think. Watch how you allow... I know this ain't just right out shouting preaching, but this is some good instruction this morning. Watch when you said and you began to think and you allow the enemy to begin to mess with your mind because that enemy is nothing but a, a liar and a thief that wants to destroy you. Keep your eyes focused upon Jesus. So now, while he thought on these things, that ain't cost you a dime. Verse 20, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, and God's going God's to be there. You just trust him. He's going to give you the answer. Hold on. Not your answer. He's going to give you the answer. Saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Now, he was taking a big step too. Don't you think people at the water cooler, cooler laughed at him? Oh, I know they didn't have water coolers back in, but I'm just trying to bring it down to us. Don't you think his friends around the corner talked about him? They knew because the Pharisees, at one point, Jesus is, is speaking to them and he lets them know what they are. And they say, we are not bastards. We are not being born out of wedlock. Who do you think they were slinging that at? The very Son of God. Amen. Joseph knew the ridicule that he would face. Listen. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall, not he might, but he shall save people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord by the prophets saying, I read this verse of scripture to you, Isaiah 7 and 14, Behold a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph he didn't sit around and think about it He didn't sit around and ponder anymore. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Emmanuel. God with us. We were born, we were created of God for a purpose and for a reason. Real quickly, and I'm not going to be very long here, but I want you to go back with me to the garden. The Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Son together. For This is not when Christ first was. Christ has always been. 
And God is ready to create us, man. Knowing all things. And before he breathes into man the breath of life, he says, let us. Let us create man. Now Christ at that moment, knowing what he was going to face, could have said, Father, it's going to cost us too much. The pain and the agony of the cross. Men are going to shun us. They're going to despise us. They're they're going to hate us. But I believe Christ looked down. 2023. And he saw me. Saw you. Saw you. And he desired you. Think about that for a moment. God could have said, I see and I know what man's going to do, and, and the pain and the agony will create another creation. But he desired you so much. That at that moment he went ahead into Adam, the first Adam, he breathed into Adam the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Not an animal. Oh, I know that's going to go against the grain. But a living soul with eternal life. We are created in his image. Why did he create us? What did God do? Do you know what God done? Uh, The Word of God tells us, read it there, what what a blessed time that was. He would come down in the garden and fellowship with man. I don't find Him coming down and fellowshipping with the lions. They're pretty. Wonderful creation. I don't find Him coming down and looking at the whales. I know I'm getting to where people, you know, but I'm just telling you. Brother Doug, don't you love animals? Sure I do. I love beef, fried chicken. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank God for them all. But who did God come down and have fellowship with? Man. He came down in the cool of the garden of the day when, when, when there was such good fellowship and joy and walked with man and talked with man. Why did he, why did he create? Because of fellowship. Do you realize he desires fellowship with us today? But when sin came, that fellowship was broken. Satan said, I'm going to put that wedge in there. He knew God could not contend with sin. He knew God would not fellowship with sin. Sin entered in. But God said, you've not won. I've already got the seed of woman ready. I've got one, oh hallelujah, coming, Jesus Christ, who will come to man and will bring, will reach up and get the hand of God and will reach down and get the hand of man on the cross and will bring us together again. You know what that means? That means right in the heat of the day, in the heat of the battle, I can call upon God and there have fellowship with Him. Brother Doug, do you believe that? I know it. I know it. I don't walk by feeling. I walk by faith. But I'm thankful for the filler getting touched once in a while. And I know right when I'm in my Lord's points that glory be to God that I reach up to the Father and I begin to praise Him and magnify His name. He reaches down and there is such sweet fellowship with the Spirit and the Holy Ghost of God. Church, God is with us. Emmanuel, glory be to His name. Emmanuel, God with us. Father, I praise You this morning. I thank You that we can declare God is with us. Oh, not because of who we are, but because of what Christ Jesus came to this earth and did. Glory, that He rejoined us together. And through the veil of Christ, 
we can come right into the very throne room of God and there have fellowship with you. Let us never forget that. Let us never forget the favor, the grace, and the mercy that we have with the Father. I pray, Lord, if there's one this morning listening, later on through the different ministries of the church that might not know you as Lord or here this morning, don't let this day go by without them believing in you for the fullness, for the full forgiveness of their sins. They believe, God, in what what Christ done there upon the cross. He paid for it that penalty for my sins and repent and there find forgiveness have their name written down in the Lamb's book of life I'm so thankful this morning for your love and for your grace and for your mercy I wonder this morning I'm going to wait for just a moment there's one here this morning has a need, burden, care whatever it might be And you just need the Spirit of God to touch you in a special way. Whatever it might be your face, my God is able. This altar is open. Not going to wait but just a moment. Oh, glory. Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. And kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name, Father, right now.